What is cool about my approach is that you can art direct the path of the lightning bolt, which is not possible with a standard lightning effect. It seems as if the lightning bolt is moving in 3D space. The chromatic distortions, which is not just a simple RGB split, were probably created with a sapphire distort chroma effect, but I found a way to recreate it inside After Effects. Oh man, I'm so done. Looking tired is trendy. The length of my hair is the result of too much work, explainer video, 3D animation, and I drafted a virtual studio. Of course, combined with a pandemic lockdown situation, I should make an appointment with the hairdresser. Ja, grüß Gott, Ponciano mein Name. Ab wann seid ihr offen? Okay, das passt. Super, alles klar, freu mich, ciao. I'm gonna be a newborn man. We're in the midst of March and uh, it's still snowing. So here I am. And this is where I'm heading to. I'm gonna show you later. And with my new hairstyle, I'm really well prepared to visit my cousin Mark in Munich City. Do you know where Munich is? It's a lot closer than Maryland. <laughs> Welcome to Munich City, guys. So the reason why I visit Mark today, today is March 18. Today is the world premiere, at least the German premiere, of Zack Snyder's Justice League, the Zack Snyder cut. So excited. Can I come in? Hey Mark, how's it going? <laughs> the Zack Snyder cut deserves a new haircut. I don't think that there is a single person who looks better with a side part than they do a middle part. Well, <laughs> this is not Zack Snyder's cut. This is the movie we've been waiting for ever since. I'm starving. This is a big one. It's a burger. Where do I start? <laughs> the Flash. Um, I love the character. I should take a closer look at Flash. How would I create the lightning effects in After Effects? And what I really like is this chromatic split effect. How do you feel, Mark? Very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mark. The end credits after almost four hours over. Mark, it was a pleasure. See thank you. Soon. You're the real Superman. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye. I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Yeah, um, was really epic, but I'm really curious how I would recreate the lighting effects from Flash without any plugins. It'll take an hour until I arrive at home. A month has passed since the premiere. The snow is gone. My eye rings are still there, but it's not because I'm overworked. It's because uh, of my severe hay fever. Anyway, I just kind of figured out how to recreate the flash lightning bolts inside After Effects. And here's my solution. Put your footage into a composition and draw a rough spline onto it to design the lightning path the way you want it to look like. Then apply a Mocha AE to the footage layer and track distinctive spots close along your lightning path and as many vertices you have on your spline. Of course, you can also track them with a standard tracking tool, but Mocha AE is so powerful it cannot only track blurry spots, but multiple spots at once. When tracking has finished, create multiple null objects. Go to Mocha AE in the effects panel and create the tracking data from each tracking layer and export the transform data to each null object. Name them properly because there are more null objects to come. Copy your path into a shape layer, add a stroke and select the path. Go to Window, open up Create Nulls from Paths and click on Points Follow Nulls, which creates a bunch of new null objects you can control the vertices positions with. Now parent each of these null objects to its closest track null object, select all the layers, press U to reveal the keyframes and delete all rotation and scale keyframes because we don't need them. Select the shape layer, add a wiggle paths modifier and play around with the parameters to get the jagged look of a lightning bolt. 
You can duplicate the shape layer and decrease the stroke width to create some kind of a forked lightning. Then add a trim paths operator to one of the shape layers and animate the start and end parameter to let the lightning grow and shrink. Copy the animated trim operator and paste it into the other shape layer. Now we have the basic structure of a lightning bolt that is attached to my arm. Select all layers except of the footage layer and pre-compose them. You can now apply a fill effect to the pre-composition, set a color and apply a glow effect. Set the blending mode to add. To create a spatial illusion, duplicate the footage layer, rotor brush one or more objects that partly covers the lightning bolt. Then duplicate the lightning layer, mask the tip of the bolt, apply a minimax effect to it, set channel to alpha, change the color to white in the fill effect, go back to the minimax effect and increase the radius. This way you can thicken the line. Then apply a fast blur effect and increase the blur radius. Now the hitting point of the lightning strike is highlighted. To add some realism to the scene, create a new solid, apply a gradient ramp to it, set the gradient along the depth of field of the live action footage and hide it below the footage layer. Then apply a camera lens blur effect to the main lightning bolt layer, set the blur map to the black solid that contains the gradient, change the options to effects and masks and increase the blur radius. The gradient determines the strength of the camera blur. Check invert blur map and adjust the gradient if necessary. Wanna have some more realism? Ok, let's add some subsurface scattering. Duplicate the rotoscope ring finger, apply a lumetry effect to it and tint it red. Then apply a circle effect, set blending mode to stencil alpha, reposition the center onto the lightning bolt and increase the feather. The circle effect is a workaround to mask the finger, because ordinary masks don't work with a rotor brush somehow. The fake subsurface scattering let the lightning bolt seem to shine through the finger. Let's add some subsurface scattering to the index as well. Trim the layers so the subsurface scattering just takes place when the lightning bolt appears. Well, that's basically it. But we want the effect to look closer to the flash's original bolt where it sparks when it hits the surface. It doesn't spark on flash's body, but let's do it anyway. Go into the lightning bolt precomposition, create a new solid and apply a CC Particle Systems 2 effect to it. Decrease birth rate to 2, change particle type to shaded sphere, decrease birth and death size and set birth and death color to white. Then go to frame 4, set a birth rate keyframe, go to frame 5 and set birth rate to 0, which creates another keyframe automatically. This way the particles explode instead of flowing permanently. Parent the solid layer to the null object of the index finger created by the create nulls from path script and set x and y position to 0. Shift the layer to the moment when the lightning bolt hits the end. Duplicate the particles layer and shift it to the moment when the bolt starts. And this is the result. Set markers at the beginning and at the end of the bolt animation. If you want, you can increase the strength of the bolt by duplicating the main bolt layer and by lightening the color and precompose all layers. Now, let's do something special. What is typical for the original bolt effect are the chromatic distortions, looking like a colorful heat wave. My theory is they use the sapphire distort chroma effect. The RGB color channels don't only split like it does when I use the VR chromatic aberrations effect. In the distort chroma effect, the color channels blend seamlessly into each other. The effect depends on a distortion map that consists of a turbulent noise effect applied to a black solid layer. Set the complexity to 3 and animate the evolution. And this is what it looks like with the Sapphire plugin. It's a bit exaggerated to demonstrate the effect. But you know me, I try to avoid third-party plugins. So let's get rid of it. Select the pre-compositions, apply a set channels effect and set green and blue to off. Duplicate the layer, set red to off and green back to green. Duplicate again and set green to off and blue back to blue. We just separated each color channel and by setting the blending mode to screen in these two top layers, we mixed the channels resulting in the original colors. 
Now comes the secret weapon. Apply a CC vector blur effect to the bottom bolt layer, set vector map to the black solid that contains the turbulent noise, set options to effects and masks, and change amount to 10. Copy the effect, paste it into the layer above, change amount to 20, paste the effect into the top layer and set amount to 30. Let's adjust the turbulent noise effect by increasing the scale to 300. Now, look at the details. The vector blur effect blurs each channel directionally according to the turbulent noise. Because the blur amount of each channel is different, the colors start to split, but in a nice blurry way. To switch on the effect when the bolt appears, you can animate the contrast. Set it to 100 when the effect starts and to 0 when you want to turn it off. The markers we set before indicate when the bolt animation starts and stops. To get rid of the gaps at the frame edge, you can apply a CC Repetile effect, set tiling to unfold, increase all values and place it above the vector blur effect. Copy and paste the effect into the other precompositions as well. I think it looks close to the flash lightning bolts. But do you think? 